for thanks for having me on. I appreciate that. No, it, it uh, it's a fun film to talk about, actually. Oh, thank uh, you. So uh, it it uh, it's very uh, interesting the amount of things you're able to put in it. Uh, well, thank so, you. I appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Uh, today, my guest is uh, Craig Moss. He is the co-writer and director for uh, Let Us In. And as we were just briefly talking, uh, sci-fi thriller, and I even got a sprinkle of horror in there, which I really appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a sprinkle. Uh, so do, you, do you want to tell us about the film and the urban legend that inspired it? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so it was inspired by the Black Eyed Kids, which I knew nothing about them until I researched it, went online, and apparently it's very popular with uh, sort of the teenagers and uh, people much younger than myself. So um, it was very interesting because these Black Eyed Kids are basically kids that wear hoodies, um, their eyes are completely black, there's no whites in their eyes, and they go up to people in their most vulnerable state. So if you're at home alone at night, they come and knock at your door, and they ask to be, <clears throat> excuse me, they ask to be let in. And that's sort of the metaphor for, for one to be abducted by these, by these black eyed kids. And people swear by it that it's happened to them. Um, so when I, when I discovered this urban legend, I thought it was just so fascinating. And I was very surprised that nobody's ever done a movie about this before, or told the story before. And so, um, so that urban legend kind of prompted me to come up with a story about this young 12 year old girl who lives in a small town, who's ostracized by everyone in this town. And suddenly her people that she knows, teenagers are being abducted. And so she has to step up and kind of figure a way to save the day. So uh, um, it, it has the elements of, of the sci-fi elements, a little bit of, like you said, a little sprinkle of horror. And it's a fun, it's a fun movie. It's something that, that uh, I, I'm very proud of. And I think it's, it's entertaining and, and a, cool, a cool watch. I think what you did, really did a good job in is, is blending all those themes. Uh, oh, thank because you. Because at, at the beginning, I wasn't 100% sure if we were going directly in a sci-fi route, especially with kind of the, the sound gizmos that uh, both Emily and Christopher are putting together. And then also with the black eyed uh, kids um, terrorizing in the different kids in the film. And right. I found it that it had a really good balance. And, well, thank you. Thank you. With, I appreciate that. And then with that, um, in, 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 one of the, in one of the statements that you had written out, you, you call it a gateway to sci-fi and thrillers. I, I would say it's also a very good gateway to test out if maybe you'd be into horror. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, for sure. Um, you know, one of the things I've noticed is there's not too many of those films for that age group, mm -hmm. these sort of gateway movies that have been out, you know, that, I, that I've known of. And so I, I really felt like this would be a good film just the concept of this Black Eyed Kids and involving this younger cast um, to making it fill that void and, and using this as a, as, as a film to help the younger set kind of get their feet wet into both the horror and the sci-fi. Yeah, because I mean, if you do it for a network, you're kind of limited to, to that certain age group, to a rating. Right. As an independent film, independent filmmaker, you're free to go as far or not as far as you want. Uh, right. Which is, I, I think the beauty of independent films is that you do whatever you want. <laughs> you make your movie. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, and there, you're right, because there is a lot of freedom to that. And then now with all the distribution channels and the way that you can get you know, your story out there, it gives you more you know, um, leniency to, to, to do things um to the more the way you feel as as the filmmaker to to tell a story so it's it is a, it's more liberating for sure yeah because and and i'm i'm kind of stuck on this point for just for this uh, for a second just because of how smart i thought it was you had you had very good use of sound in some spots where a character would turn and you would use sound to 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 give that fright you also had uh you had one instance uh, maybe maybe more than, than maybe I just don't recall right now, but uh, mm -hmm. like just the concept of gore when when uh, when a when a girl tries to kick one of the black eyed kids, and and then um, 
so things things like that if if you find if, if you find yourself that oh you kind of enjoyed those moments and then also the fact that you had Tobin Bell uh in in your film right you know somebody who's older is going to be like oh oh yeah that's you know, yeah, that's, that's right Jigsaw. Uh, right right all, all that together I I, I feel it it's a it's a really it's really it was really smart just just because of the fact that you have you have still the sci-fi element but it's like okay now that if I like this then maybe we can turn the notch up a little bit with another film and another it's not a it's not like a goosebumps type scare and it, it's a more right. of a traditional this is what you're going to find in a horror film type scare and I, I really like that well thank you thank you I appreciate that yeah it's um you know all those elements were things that we did want to kind of implement into the film and um you know someone asked me before um just how far do you go, mm. especially with this being sort of this entree into for younger kids into um, uh, the horror or this you know, horror sci-fi genre. And I just remember growing up and seeing different things specifically. I know this is a weird analogy because uh, this is an animated show, but watching Scooby-Doo as a kid, like really young. I don't know. Have you ever seen Scooby-Doo or watched Scooby-Doo? But oh, they would have... Yeah, they would have moments that were creepy, like would kind of would scare you. Um, but you never, you you always wanted to watch it. Like you you still tuned in and you loved it, regardless of the fact that you were six or seven years old. Not that this movie's for six or seven year olds, but I'm saying that specifically, mm -hmm. uh, that series, you still wanted to watch it. And I think that there's, you know, you, you can you can have those moments and you can heighten them to a certain degree um for this demographic and it, it still is enough and and will actually um it's okay to scare them a little bit you know it's, it's okay to have those moments you know um so i i felt this was a this movie was was a way to kind of implement those those types of things so so what i also uh, enjoyed is is your very simple concept of your black eyed kids because it, it reminded me of uh, when i was growing up and you'd see on television when they do the the uh, like the police the police sketch. Yeah, it, it kind of always yeah. looked like that. The, the the guy with the hoodie and the the not very right. alive eyes and things like that. So it was creepy. Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. We did it. We did have that. Um, but uh, yeah, there were those moments where it was like there were some creepy things and like those visuals that you're talking about we, we we did that and then also just sort of the the scares that we planted sort of throughout the film too um but but i think also like it's a it's a kind of a sweet story and dealing with you know I, what i love most about this is uh, we have a 12 year old female mm -hmm. protagonist in the movie who gets to step up and kick a little butt and um you know, uh, that I haven't really seen anything like that in a while. And, 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 and I just love that empowering sort of um, the younger female kids. And, you know, so it was a lot of fun, that story and, and how she's ostracized and, you know, for something she didn't do. And then mm -hmm. and I'm not going to, I don't ruin it, but how she's able to, in, in the end, kind of win the respect and, and uh, find her place in, in her small town. So. So, uh, and it deals with also bullying and, and, and some other issues too, but, but, you know, it was, as I said, I, it was a, it was a really fun movie to make and super proud of it. Uh, now that we're on the subject, talk a little bit about Mackenzie Moss on set and uh, what it was like working with her. The worst. I mean, she is, no, she's, she's actually my daughter and, um, <laughs> I, I, and I've worked with her. Um, we were, so one of the first movies that I did I put, I have two daughters. I put both of them in the movie in just a little small thing. And she, they both really loved it. And so then they started both pursuing acting and then Mackenzie kind of loved it more and then continued down that road. And she kind of, she did a bunch of films on her own. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I was doing a movie called The Charnel House, which was, was a little more horror. Um, we shot that out in Ohio and and we, we cast her in one of the roles. And it was the first time I had worked with her where she was like in a lead and um, she was eight years old and it was, it was terrific. And I loved working with her. I mean, it was just great. And I always said after we made that film that I wanted to do another movie with her. So when this opportunity came around, um, I, she, at that point she was 12. 
Um, and uh, we, 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 I, you know, jumped at that opportunity and just, you know, love the fact of being able to work with her and, and be with her on set. And she's just really smart when it comes to, to acting her choices or instincts and, and just her, knowledge is very high IQ when it comes to being on set and knowing everything and you know involves just on the technical side and then on the on the performance side so it was a lot of fun it was great yeah, that's awesome I have an 11 year old yeah. daughter and oh you, you know, do yeah I, I aspire to do things like that all the time with her you know whatever I can share with her yeah it's the it's the greatest right when you can share that common goal that you both have and collaborate together mm -hmm. it's like the, it's you know it's great to be you know having a daughter is the the greatest thing in the world Absolutely. i'm biased because i have two daughters so you know but regardless um you share those father-daughter moments in life but being able to do something like this together whatever it is if it's making a movie or, or building a model or or playing a sport whatever it is it's just it, it's such a it's just so priceless those moments are just amazing so it was great well, uh, what is the difference necessarily if from the dynamic from working with an actor to your daughter as far as giving direction? I'm really curious. Um, well, she, you know, there are, uh, I, I'd say overall it's terrific, but there are the moments more so when she was eight than she was 12, where it was like, okay, dad, all right, are we done? Can we just, you know, like, just like kind of, a little annoyed um, at, at moments because she wanted to go play with a dog at one point. And again, this was when <laughs> she was eight. And so, you know, okay, dad, is that it? Could we have to do another take? You know, which is something she would never do with any other director, but because it's me, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like you, 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 you it, it's hard for her to, to understand that dad on set, it's, it's director. But regardless, when she was 12 and we shot this, this film, she was great. I mean, she was, obviously a little older and she understood that we had limited time to shoot this movie. And, um, you know, she was the lead. So she carried the movie and, and uh, <clears throat> she did a great job and was very efficient and worked well and uh, was, was really good. So getting a little bit back to the film, uh, I'm really curious because I've, I've interviewed a lot of directors and in mainstream and in independent films very passionate about making their properties be in the 80s and the 90s. What, what is it about about those two decades that that speaks to us so much? Um, well, I mean, I grew up in those eras, <laughs> so there's a nostalgia factor. And and I truly feel that the the best movies of, of sort of the teenage movies and the middle school movies came out during that time. Yes. A lot of the John Hughes movies, but then, you know, you can also get into mm -hmm. like our inspiration for this is also like Goonies was, it was, it was a mm -hmm. big movie scream, obviously. Um, so I think like having grown up on those things and, and being thoroughly entertained by those films and kind of feeling there's a lack thereof, you kind of pull from those, that time frame, And um, because there was a lot of, a lot of great films that came out of those two decades. A lot so it's kind of you pay you know um, uh you know, it's like an homage to the to that time yeah in a sense yeah, gr yeah you know, growing up in the 90s too uh born in the late 80s I, I i think the best films for me personally were still in the 80s as i was being yeah. born some of the best films were being made oh and, absolutely and i don't feel like they're number one they've been able to be created enough to make new properties a lot of times and then mm -hmm. when you try to remake them, they don't have that same, that same feel to them. I, I don't exactly. Know what it is. It's weird. I mean, unless you're telling a completely different story, like I know when they, when they tried to remake Ghostbusters with the female cast, it wasn't, you know, obviously Ghostbusters is just a, such a great movie. It's like, how do you remake that film? Um, but from what I understand, the new Ghostbusters, the Jason Reitman one I've heard is just phenomenal. It's just a completely different story. And it's, it's, you know, it kind of stands on its own, but the remakes, it's just so, when you have something so great, why, you know, why <laughs> try to remake it? You know, that's the, I think that's the big issue. Yeah, I, I think so. What do you, what do you hope audiences take away from Let Us In? Um, 
I mean, I think overall, you know, um, as I said, I think one of the, the, the core things of the film is trying to tr stay true to yourself and your morals and your values and not let others kind of shake it, shake you the other way or try to sway you to go into another direction. So I, th I hope it can inspire younger people to, to kind of stick to their guns and, and stick to what they want to do as, as opposed to following. I think that's, that's sort of the main message throughout the film. Awesome. Craig, thank you so much for your time. I enjoyed the conversation with you. Thank you. I did too. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll do this again down the road. Absolutely. When, uh, when can we see Let Us In? Uh, July 2nd. And it's on demand everywhere. I think Fandango Now, um, uh, Apple TV, um, Roku. And I, I, I think from what I know, it, it's going everywhere. So, so just look for it on those and on those different platforms and uh and hope you hope you enjoy it I'm, as i said i'm very proud of it yeah it was a great balanced film great introduction to both sci-fi and horror i think so definitely thank you so much i great. appreciate it thank you take care have a good one okay you too